Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Solo Set, and this video is sponsored by Discord. Go to discord.gg forward slash Unit Lost, download the Discord client, join the Unit Lost Discord server. We are going to do giveaways on this server. We have loads of community events. It's absolutely beautiful. And of course, guys, this video is sponsored by Discord. So here's the thing, right, guys? The first time I looked at the Junkenstein's event for this year, I was like, uh, uh, really? It's not any different? Yeah, sure. We've got endless mode. Yeah, sure. We get uh, the summoner as a boss. And like, yeah, sure. It it's a bit different than it was last year with this sort of multiple boss spawning shenanigans which is going on. And I'm like, you know, uh, th this is this is okay. I'm a bit disappointed. In fact, I put this tweet out. And in this tweet, I'm like, yeah, you know, skins are great, but you know, same old Junkenstein. Anyway, I've been playing Junkie Science Revenge, and it's dawned on me that it's actually really, really fun. And I just forgot how fun it was. And I think I was becoming, ladies and gentlemen, borderline entitled to the point of where the hell is the extra content for Junkie Science Revenge? Now, this was kind of exacerbated a little bit by the fact that they've totally redone the Iconvold map. So they've Halloweenified the map. And I'm like, why, why can't we just go to a different area of the map? Blah, blah, blah. What's going on? In fact, I made loads and loads of notes. So it's going to be quite interesting to go over this. So basically, um, I was disappointed that it was the same event um, and I'm like well surely players get drawn back to seasonal events when it's a new event so if you've got well when you've got a new brawl so yeah we knew it was going to be Halloween we knew it was going to be Junkin' Science Revenge Halloween Terror all of that good stuff but I was hoping and in fact the videos that I made on the channel which you guys have no doubt watched where I was like yeah maybe we go into the castle or we do something else um, when we got the skin leaks it was like oh my god maybe uh, Reaper is the boss this time around with his vampire skin uh, because we've got the uh, Blood Moon, which was like something to do with vampires and werewolves and all this stuff. It's like, oh my god, this could be anything. This could be so awesome. We could be looking at a completely different Junkenstein's Revenge event. And remember what Jeff said a while back, where Jeff was like, yeah, we're going to reuse the same events, but we're actually going to build on them and make them more interesting and more fun to play. So when I initially played through Junkenstein's Revenge, I'm like, well, actually, it's not that different, right? So it was kind of making me worry a lot for the game. Anyway, so... I had issues with like, the, surely the game's gonna become stale if they just keep recycling events like this where it's literally the same event. Yeah, I know it's slightly different, but it's basically the same event. There are some special things you can do. So we've got endless mode this time around, which is fun because it was never that fun when the event just finished. Um, we've also got, uh, it's available in custom games. So you can unlock whatever heroes you wanna do. You can put crazy modifiers on. You can just go mental. I mean, you can make yourself Bastion doing 500% extra damage and solo the entire event if you'd like to with you taking 500 percent less damage if that's a thing basically you take no damage but do loads of damage and it's fun to do that like it, it, undeniably it is a fun thing to do however i was worried right and i actually I, I i basically put the outline for a video and it was this overwatch the impact of recycled events and i kind of was fleshing it out and, and i've kind of gone over it in this video so far where i was worried right because i'm like it's the same event anyway I've been playing Junkie Stein's Revenge for literally hours. I have been playing this event since it has been available to play. And now what does that say? Uh, well, I think that says that it's a really damn good event. Now, it's the same as last year, right? I know it's the same as last year. You guys know it's pretty much the same as last year, apart from the Symmetra boss. That's it, right? So why is this so fun to play? And then, it, and then it, I kind of sat back in my chair and I was like, you know what? I think it's just because this is a totally different way of playing Overwatch which isn't competitive because competitive is a ball ache, ladies and gentlemen. You can have really good games. In fact, I've been playing competitive a bit today. I think I played five or six games. Um, three of them were really good um, and the rest were sort of mm, iffy. Like, I mean, the first game of the day, I had a Torbjorn main who was just playing Torbjorn and being really toxic to the team and it was not great and he wasn't really trying. Like, I've got no problem with people picking heroes if they're going to play the hero, but this guy just didn't care. So I'm like, here we go. This is blah, blah, blah. You know, not this again in Overwatch. Then the next game was awesome. Everybody's talking. The game after that was pretty good as well. And then, yeah, I think the game after that was kind of okay-ish. And then we started had some iffy games. And like I said, it was all over the place. It wasn't just pure Overwatch fun. Now, I do not get pure Overwatch fun from playing Quick Play because Quick Play has the same problems that competitive have. If you want to go into Quick Play and pick a hero and maybe... I don't know, play Soldier 76, but somebody else picks Soldier 76, then you don't really have the chance to do that. So you have to play something else. Also, team comps can be really crazy and people can maybe not play the objective, which, you know, you still have to play the objective. It, just because it's quick play don't mean you mess about. However, with Junkin' Science Revenge, because it's such like a distilled version of the game, it's not like we're just going in and trying to do, you know, payload objectives or 
capture the point objectives or anything like that. We're just literally shooting what is in front of us. Now, I know not every hero is available in this, so it will kind of suffer from the same issue as quick play and competitive when people take your heroes away from you. Um, but it just feels like, I don't know, it just feels liberating. It feels like a different way to play the game. And it feels like a way to play the game that we need as a permanent game mode, which gets me on to the main bulk of this video after a beautiful introduction there, because I hope I explained what I'm saying there, guys, right? I, I was ready to trash this and just go, oh my God, not Junkie Science Revenge again, but I forgot how fun this actually was, and it really is fun, but it's PvE, isn't it, guys? Absolutely PvE. I'll take you back to the, the Uprising event. We all played that. We all loved that event. That was the best event in this game's history. That That's it. It was the best brawl, right? When I say event, I mean brawl. So it was the best brawl-related event. Event-related brawl. That's it. <laughs> because it gave us a completely different way of playing Overwatch. We had Junkenstein's Revenge before that, which was basic AI implementation. The bots basically moved from point A to point B, and point B was the door, point A was their spawn. They didn't really do anything special. Uprising comes along and we've got different types of enemies, unique enemies, which do crazy stuff. But yeah, I know this kind of unique enemies in Junkie Sign's Revenge, but it's basically long range attack bot, or like mortar bot. Uh, it's sort of dopey walk towards the door bot and then it's Zomnic bomb bot and that's kind of it. The, the variety in that mode is with the bosses. However, Uprising had loads of little different events. We had different objectives. We moved around the entire map. It was really well done. It was really fun. And you guys know that leading up to that, I was like, we need PvE. Please be PvE. And it was PvE. And that was friggin' awesome. Anyway, we fast forward to now. This is the second time we've played Junkin' Science Revenge. And on paper, it's not really changed. I was hoping, like in my wildest dreams, what I wanted us to do was walk around the entire Iconvolve map, right? Which kind of frustrated me a bit because they have designed the map for Halloween. Then there are different events happening at different points, different bosses, different things we need to do. Maybe we're escorting Junkenstein's monster into the castle for it to be revived, yeah? And Junkenstein's in there and we just have to do, I don't know, kill Junkenstein and then revive Road Rock. I don't know why we would do this because it is Junkenstein's monster, but who cares? Like it would have added variety to it and that's what I was hoping I was hoping for this and I'm gonna use a very fancy word super vocabulary which of course amalgamation which just means like mashing two things together like I was hoping we get uprising Junkenstein's revenge they're smashed together and it gives us this beautiful Junkenstein's Revenge 2, which is like the sequel to Junkenstein's Revenge. That's why I was disappointed straight away, because I'm like, it, oh, it's just the same. Like, there's nothing really different here. This isn't Junkenstein's Revenge 2, it's just straight up Junkenstein. But after playing it, I started to realize that this actually is what I needed right now in my Overwatch career. Because to touch back on competitive again, comp is a a very random experience and it's randomly frustrating that's the problem with comp you go into the game you're matched with four support mains or you're matched with five dps mains nobody wants to tank nobody wants to support and it's a problem and it's not like this is just a problem oh it only happens in bronze it only happens in silver gold plat diamond master grandmaster top 500 i think the key's there it happens at every single rank i've seen this happen in loads of my games i've seen it happen in loads of overanalyzed submissions i see you guys tweet to me constantly about crazy things happening it's a problem with overwatch and it goes into deeper rooted issues with the game the fact that it doesn't have um it kind of really doesn't punish people who don't really want to play and form a team but the big problem with that is how can overwatch ever do that because if it starts like banning heroes or like the team vote on what heroes can be played it's always going to be the same heroes that get played and what about the guys that do legitimately like to play let's say attack Symmetra and they may be good at this like sometimes there are players which are good like um you'll see like a lot of people who play like Torb that you know do communicate with the team and that's fine you know, that's great I don't mind those players it's just the guys that are intent on making the game not a great experience for other people and the big problem with Overwatch competitive is it only takes one person to ruin the game for your team like like you've got five other people there, like hopefully you're not going to ruin the game. So you've got five other people who you hope will play heroes that will form a team and will not troll and throw the game. That's a lot of randomness in comp. And I hope at some point they come to, uh, they design a system which is going to remove that from comp because it is very frustrating. Anyway, all of this across all of the accounts that I've been playing on, or like, you know, I, I've currently got three accounts that I've been playing on. So Spitfire, Crusher and Stakebake. I've been playing on those accounts um, this season primarily. And and I've been having fun, but then I'll have really down moments. Anyway, I have just literally been loading Overwatch up, playing Junkenstein's Revenge, and it is so fun. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what I want. We need a permanent PvE mode in this game. Now, 
BlizzCon is on the horizon. I hope to God we get more announcements at BlizzCon than just this is the new Overwatch League Spectator tool. This is a new hero. Because I think we're going to get a new hero, right? When I look back to last year, we got a new hero. We got teased with Oasis. They gave us the arcade. So what I'm hoping this year they do is they go, it's a new hero. I know they're working on the Spectator tool for Overwatch League. And we've got the Overwatch World Cup stuff going on. But we need something else. And this is what they need to do, I think, at least in my eyes. Competitive could probably be sorted out if we have a guild or clan system in the game. If they announce that, I will literally lose my shit, ladies and gentlemen. If they go, we're announcing Overwatch clans or Overwatch, whatever they want to call them, outfits, I don't know. I will be like, wow, I have just lost my mind because that is literally what I'm going to do right there and then whip out my laptop, set one up if it was available then, but obviously probably won't be because they usually show things in advance. That would be phenomenal because it means you could get groups of like-minded like players together then and it also means competitive would be very easy to set up six-man groups because if you've got a massive group of people like to pull from, you can get them in, you know their names, you know they're going to play well and then you stop and then the, like I have always maintained the best experience I have ever had on Overwatch was when I played in one of the ESL minor cups. It was online sign up. Anybody could sign up. We signed up with six players. We were all different skill abilities. It didn't even matter. It was absolutely phenomenal. That was anyway. Junkin Size Revenge. I was going to bash it, but the thing is, it's actually quite fun. Now, I'm hoping the development time that was saved not actually building extra stuff for Junkenstein has gone somewhere else other than just sort of spectator tools for Overwatch League. I hope that we're going to get some like amazing reveal at BlizzCon. I don't know whether I'm hyping this up again to sort of levels beyond which which are even possible, but I just hope we get something extra at BlizzCon. Guys, I've been Silosa and this has been Unit Lost. And this hasn't really been a rant video. It was on the verge of being one, but I'm having so much fun playing Junkenstein's Revenge. I think it would be quite entitled of me to just moan and go, oh, it's so bad, I don't want this. Because it really is a fun mode. And there's no shame in bringing back modes if they're really fun to play. And that's what this is, you know, so it's fine. It's got a little bit of an upgrade, but not much. But I still think like in the back of my mind, it would have been nice if they actually did a bit more with it. However, maybe they're spending that effort on other things. We just don't know. Guys, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. Junkenstein's Revenge is fun. Get out there and play it. The skins for this event are the best skins I've seen for a hell of a long time. I mean, they are just ridiculous. I, pff, mental. It's mind-blowing. Anyway, guys, I've been Salosa. This is Unit Lost. You can follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming. And uh, yeah, why don't you join the Discord as well, which is discord.gg forward slash Unit Lost. It was also promoted at the start of this video as well. So don't be afraid of uh, not joining the Discord. It's a wonderful place to be. All right, guys, catch you on the next one. Toodaloo.